All right, so we're going to work through this problem to use the normal probability plot and assess whether the sample data could have come from a population that is normally distributed. So our question is a random sample of 16 students receiving student loans was obtained and the amount of their loans for the school year were recorded using normal probability plot to assess whether, whether the sample data could have come from a population that is normally distributed. To do this, we're going to use our calculator to do the majority of the work. The first thing that I want to do is sort the data that they have given us from smallest to largest. So I'm just going to click on uh, copy table. I'm just going to copy it to my clipboard. So I'm going to copy that. I just right click and copy. And then I'm going to paste this into Excel. So I'm going to paste that. And then I'm going to right click that data, sort, and I'm going to sort from smallest to largest. So this has our 16 data points that are sorted. So that's going to make it easier once I go to put this into the calculator. To go to the, once we're in the calculator, go to stat and then edit. And for L1, you just want to list one through the number of data points. So in our case, this will be one through 16. And then in L2, this is where we're going to enter in the data points that we just sorted from smallest to largest. So we're going to start with 1,200, which happens twice, and then continue on through all 16 data points. After entering in our data points, we are then going to calculate F sub i. This is the expected area under the normal curve to the left of the ith observation. So for instance, this first spot here would be calculating the expected area under the normal curve to the left of the first observation, and then the second, and the third, and so on. That formula is F sub i equals i minus 0 0.375 divided by n plus 0 0.25. Rather than calculate this for all 16 data points, I'm going to highlight L3 and set that equal to. And so for i, these are the, the numbers in L1. So I'm going to open parentheses and do second number one, and that gives me L1 minus. 0 0.375 and then I'm going to divide that by n. n is the number of data points we have, so we have 16 in this case, plus 0 0.25. Close those parentheses and if I hit enter, it's going to go through and give us the expected area to the left for each of these data points for each of these observations. Now, we need to find the z expected z-scores. To do that, again, I'm going to have the calculator do a lot of the heavy lifting. We want to figure out what the z-score would be for each of the areas listed in L3 or in list 3. So for this first one, again, I'm going to have the calculator do most of the work. So we do second distribution or second vars, which gets us to distribution. And then number three is the inverse normal. And so here, if you put in the area, uh, it'll give you the z-score. So I'm going to put in that 0 0.0385. I'm going to go out four decimal places. You can go out the full five if you'd like. And then I'm going to continue doing this. So second vars number three, I'm doing the inverse norm of, and I'm having to type in the data point that is in L3, that's right beside it. So for this second data point, um, we're going to put an in inverse norm of 0.1. And you should close your parentheses, but in this case, you don't have to. Uh, either way will work. And you're going to continue down and do this for each data point. 
Once all of our data points are entered, let's look at the graph where we are going to have the L2 as our x and the L4 as our y. And so to translate that over, that simply means that we'll have our observed values as the x-axis and the expected z values as the y-axis. So to access this, I'm going to click on second and then y equals so that I can get to stat plot. And I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to go into plot one. I'm going to make sure this is on. I'm going to choose this first, the scatter plot. And then for my X list is L2 and my Y list is L4. Now it will default to L1 and L2. To change that, simply use second. And then number two gets you to L2. And for L4, it's going to be second. And then number four to get to L4. We will then hit graph. And you may notice we don't see a whole lot. So we'll then hit Zoom number nine. If you come down here, you can scroll down and see that Zoom sat, or if you just hit number nine, and then here is our scatter plot. If there is a strong linear correlation, then we can determine that our sample came from a population that is normally distributed. And this looks fairly linear, but we need to find out how linear it is. So, I'm going to go to stat, calculate, and then linear regression. Now, typically, whenever we do this, it's going to default to using L1 and L2, but we are using L2 and L4. So I'm simply going to do second two to get L2. I'm going to use a comma and then second four to get L4. And this is telling the calculator to use L2 and L4. And once we hit enter, we're going to have a, an R value, a correlation coefficient of 0.975, uh, 166, and so on. So to three decimal places, we're going to have 0.975. Now, this is pretty close to one, which is a, a strong correlation, but we have to determine if it is strong enough. To do that, we need to compare to the table of critical values. So this table of critical values is based on the sample size n. We have 16 in our sample, so the critical value is 0.941. Our R value, the 0.975, is greater than 0.941 because it is greater than the number that is in this table, then there is indeed a linear correlation between these. So yes, there is a correlation between the expected z-score and the observed data because our 0.975 exceeds the critical value of 0.941.